Hello, hello everyone. This is John White from Genius Read, and welcome to the tenth lecture of the ISIS training series. Now, the learning outcomes for today is to simulate the CSTR and reactions in the ISIS, also to set new preferences. Now, the prerequisites to nav uh, navigate the PFD, add streams in the PFD, or the workbook, add and connect unit operations and if you find out that you cannot do any of these you should refer to the previous lectures now the introduction in this lecture a flow sheet for the production of propylene glycol is presented propylene oxide is combined with water to produce glycol in a CSCR now um, the propylene oxide and water feed streams are combined in the mixer the combined stream is fed into the reactor to a reactor operating at atmospheric pressure in which propylene glycol is produced. Now here's the problem statement. Now simulate the production of propylene glycol from propylene oxide and excess water using a CSTR. Now this is the reaction water plus propylene oxide give you propylene glycol. Now the fluid package is um, uniquark. The base component is propylene oxide. These are just for when you are modeling the reaction. You see it. the reaction phase is combined liquid. The forward reaction arrhenius and um, parameters. This is the frequency factor. This is the activation energy. Also, these um, are the parameters of the feed of the feed streams, and these are the CSCR specification. So, first and foremost, we have to do the high seas um, preferences as to set new session preference and create new unit set. So, let's move to our high seas. So, now we have to create a new case. Okay. First and foremost, we have to set a new preference just in case you want to change the set of units you are using or you want to combine one or two. So you come here and click on options. And here you can see these preferences. You can select, you can tick or untick just to suit whatever you want to do. But well, since it's units we want to do, let's come to units of measurement. We are going to select field. Then after I select one, you press um, copy. Now means that you can change this to field white or um, let's say field one. Then let's say you want to change the um, liquid volume flow. From barrel per day to US gallon per minute. So you can change this. You can also change the mass to let's say kg or something, but let, let's leave it as a um, pound. You can do whatever you want to do, then you save this preference. Set. Let's say let's name it field one so that you can load it if you want to use this. So that is that save then okay so it means for this particular um case you are working on this is the um unit set you'll be using so first and foremost let's save our work let's call this lecture Sorry. Okay, let's go back to our slide. Now, building the simulation, okay, first and foremost, defining the simulations, providing binary coefficients, then defining the reactions. Okay, let's go to so, high sys. 
let's define the simulation component list we need water we need propylene propylene glycol which is this we also need propylene oxide which is this and that's that then the fluid package we are actually using a quark that is that so we come to binary coefficients there are some of these coefficients are unknown so we click on unknowns only so it calculates it i think that's that so we can come to the reaction and add new reaction it should be a kinetic reaction so click on kinetic double click on this then you add your components let's say first component is water second is the propylene oxide The third is the problem like all uh, the stoichiometric coefficients is minus one, minus one, then this is one. Now from the equivalent statement, the water was excess. Now to model this, it means that this forward forward order of water should be zero. Now the base components we are told was um, propylene oxide. And it's in a combined liquid phase. What else are we given that we have not imputed? Okay, we've now imputed the frequency factor and the activation energy. So let's go back to Hysis. You can see that these are the arrhenius. If you just hover your mouse over this inner all reaction arenas parameters a is the frequency factor which was given to be 1.7 times 10 to power 13 right so you just run 1.7 e 13 that's exponential 13 then the activation energy was 3.24 times 10 is power 4 BTU per pound mole Form. I think that's that now the reaction is completely modeled. So we can close this and add to fluid package. Add set to fluid package. Now that's that we are done. We can come to our simulation. Now from the simulation environment from the um, problem statements. From the problem, um, from the introduction, rather, you can see that um, propylene oxide is combined with water. That's in the mixer. Okay, it's combined in a mixer before it is fed into the um, reactor. So let's model the mixer. Just let's pick the mixer. I don't want to create streams one by one, so we are going to create them from here. Let's call the outlet mixer outlet. Let's call this water as the fed first feed entering. Then let's say the second should be propylene oxide. Right, I'm correct. Okay, so let's go to the worksheet composition you know that water has one of this you know that here prop oxide has one of this because it is pure so let's go to the conditions conditions is for um prop oxide the temperature is 75 degree Fahrenheit the pressure 
the 16.27 PSIA the okay this we are giving 1.1 atmosphere which should be the same thing as what imputed initially but let's do it like this then we are giving the molar flow to be 150 pound per hour so here also the temperature is 75 as for water the pressure is 16.17 but we are giving mass flow to be 11,000 pound per hour so we can see that the meter is soft so we can close this and arrange our so arranged this I think it's properly arranged it looks good so next thing is to bring in our CST and model it so this is this so you can drag here and drag it to this point so double click on it let's call it CSTR now the vapor outlet, let's call it CSTR vent. It should be empty because I don't think um, there will be a change in phase. CSTR, let's call this product. And then, so let's come to reaction and let's add the reaction set one properly added let's come to um, dynamics here we are given that um, the vessel okay let me, let me confirm we are given that the vessel volume is um, 280 feet cube the liquid volume percent is 5 percent the bottom product temperature is 75 degree Fahrenheit so let's go back this should be 280 feet cube. This should be 85. I think that's that. We are done. So let's just make this look um, good. Let's rotate it. Move on, let's take it up a bit. So I think this is cool. Let's add an energy stream, a coolant, because it's going to be emitting a lot of heat. Reaction. So let's come to the worksheet and specify that the product is 75. As we are given that the CSR product is 75 degree Fahrenheit. So that is that we've modeled the CSR, we've modeled the um, production of propylene glycol from propylene oxide and water using the continuous cell tank reactor. So let's go back to our slide. Thomas, okay, we've done this, we've built the simulations, we've done all this now. Calculate the reaction temperature, the reactor temperature which is actually um, the temperature of the product temperature of the CSTR bottom product the actual percentage conversion and optimal reactor temperature so let's go back here we can click on this then come under your reactions click on the result so here you can see that this is the actual percent conversion rate which we have to look for actual percent conversion which is 40.30 but this is actually a very very inefficient um, reactor so if we go to our worksheet we can see that the CSR product is 75 degree Fahrenheit but we are also asked to find the um, optimal temperature so what we're we going to do is we are going to be changing this 75 Maybe we'll bring it down, then take it up and see how it affects the um, percentage of act, uh, actual conversion. So let's change this to 60. Then let's go to our reactions. 
the result we can see that it reduced to 22 so it means we have to increase this till we get our optimal to get around uh, around um, 90 to 95 percent conversion so now to do this we can't just be changing it one by one that's why we were taught let me reverse this back to 75 that's why we were taught case studies in earlier lectures just in case you don't know how to do a case study you learn it here but you should be able to do it if you've been following the lectures from the beginning so let's do a case study let's add so let's add variables let's say csrd actual percent conversion then also csr product temperature actually you can see from here the csr product temperature is independent for the um conversion the actual percent conversion is not meaning that as we change the temperature is the temperature we can manipulate as we change it we will notice a change in the actual um, conversion so let's input our lower bound we want to start from let's say 15 Fahrenheit let's say 250 okay 240 let the step size be 10 and also you should reset after the run I think that's everything we need to Okay. This reset after the runs means means that after the entire um, case study is done, it should go back to the 75 and um, degree Fahrenheit that we already imputed. So let's run. Okay, done. 20 states have been done. So let's go to the results. So this is the result. You can see that. Okay, I think if we use a graph, it will be better. So now from here you can see that as the temperature increases the percent conversion increases to until it gets to maybe this point hundred then start decreasing. So I think the optimal temperature should be around 160 because there are many factors you have to consider. Like for example, the amount of um the amount of energy you spend to increase the temperature from 75 to um, let's say 150 is it does it justify the increase in conversion you understand so you put all those things into consideration then select the temperature you want to use but let's just say 150 gives 96 point one nine percent conversion 160 gives 97.77 and I think that is fair enough so let's use 160 in our simulation so we can open this and make this 160 then if we come to our reactions we see that um results we see that this is 97.7 so that's that for that that's all for today welcome to the end of this lecture thank you very much and i hope you learned a lot Today, please remember to practice once again. This is John White for Junior Screen from Junior Screen. Thanks for attending this um, lecture and also do well to subscribe to this video and you could give this video a thumbs up if you like. Thank you very much.